thank you everybody for joining our webinar today. Um, so we do have uh, a little a slight hiccup. Uh, so uh, my co-host, uh, Mark Boultry, uh, had some massive power outage, and so he's uh, doing some transition right now. I think that we are good to go, so I'm going to get started. Um, hey, thank Colin, you for joining. I'm here. <laughs> Great. Just, just able to jump on. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, so get started. So what the focus of our webinar today is robotic process automation. And more specifically, we're going to talk about Appian's newer offering called Appian RPA. And so the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of go through a little bit of introductions. So myself, my name is Colin Schoenfelder. I am the Director of Technology at Macedon Technologies. And I oversee our Center of Excellence, which is our group of architects, um, and also our in-house solution development. Uh, and that sort of includes also the different emerging technologies research that we are doing. So things like RPA and, you know, it's kind of related technologies. And with me, I have Mark Boultry, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Uh, yeah, this is Mark. Uh, so I'm a enterprise architect here at Mastodon Technologies. Uh, I am a technical escalation point and uh, a technical expert for a number of projects here uh, at Mastodon. Great. Thank you. Um, and so the first, the next thing I wanted to do is kind of just give a little bit of context into where we arrived at this topic for um, RPA. And to do that, just wanted to introduce a little bit about actually Macedon. So at Macedon, we are practitioners that specialize in Appian-centric solutions. And so what that means is that most of the different applications that we are building out are going to have most of their development done within Appian. However, across all of our different clients and across all of our different engagements, every one of those different applications that we are building out is integrating with a number of different systems in that landscape. And there's a lot of different parts of, you know, or a lot of different software technologies that we are going to interact with. And what we have found across all of that time is that a lot of times the integrations themselves and, you know, moving data over from legacy and that migration that you needed to do is really where a lot of the project risk and a lot of the investment comes in up front, which can make it really challenging to, you know, move over and to modernize into other systems. And so, you know, as part of that conversation, that is where, you know, RPA tools come in. So let's start by just defining exactly what RPA robotic process automation is. Okay. So simply, RPA is the use of software robots that are able to mimic human interaction with computer applications. And they do that by basically taking over a mouse, taking over a keyboard, and using the software applications that are loaded onto an environment the same way that a human would. And this concept of robotic process automation isn't really something which is necessarily a very new technology. It's more of an evolution of a technology because these technologies, RPA, is very similar to things that have been done, you know, for a long time for functional software UI testing, right? So if you have anything which is on the testing side, just kind of going through and doing regression testing, you have uh, some sort of a, you know, an automated system which is going through entering different mock data into systems and making sure that everything is behaving as expected. It's really a very similar technology to RPA. The difference is that RPA is really focused on, instead of the testing side of things, more of the production side of things. So actually using those same kinds of software, but within production systems to do things that can be, you know, automated in a relatively repeatable way. And so moving different application data between systems on a front end by actually, you know, taking over and using, um, you know, a machine, pulling information in a scripted way out of old systems and moving it into new ones the same way that a human would. Okay. But so to kind of expand on that a little bit more, let's kind of go into a bit more about what exactly RPA is. So RPA is really an integration mechanism. So RPA is a great way of mitigating some of the cost when you have different legacy applications that you need to kind of pull information from. So very often it is the case that when you have legacy applications that have been in you know, production for a long time and have been used, they are not going to have you know, modern integration methods that they have you know, right out of the box. So they're not going to have you know, modern APIs that we can access or you know, their backend database systems are going to be in models that are not very accessible or not accessible at all to modern systems. And so it can be really difficult to pull information out of those and integrate with them with, you know, a more modernized software. 
right? And so RPA can be used as a sort of middle ground there, something that uh, without having to invest in building out a full robust integration can simulate a human using those systems to pull information out of them or to push information into them so that but while you still have kind of that overlap between your old systems and your new systems, you have a way of, you know, building out those integrations at a relatively low, you know, investment. But it is, in the end, you know, designed to be something more of a short-term solution. And it really represents that bridging the gap. So if you have different, you know, short processes, I have a few month window that I am going to be using both systems at the same time because I have my legacy data or my old data still in my old system, but all of my new processes are going to be running in my, you know, modernized solution. That is something that you want to try and, you know, make sure that you're not going to be, uh, you know, using for a long term. And so you can build out something in RPA in order to kind of bridge that gap. And another thing that it is very good for is those quick wins. And so when I say quick wins, what I really am talking about is, you know, one time processes, I need to move one big set of data from an old system in or to a new system, or I need to do um, something which is going to be a one time process that I don't want to have to build out a full application in order to accomplish when I can do that with just sort of, you know, some scripting and um, use bots in order to perform the actual, you know, interaction with those legacy systems. But you know, looking at the flip sign of exactly what that is. So let's take a look at what RPA is not. So RPA is not, first and foremost, intelligent. So I think that there's, you know, with the kind of buzzword status that RPA has, you know, accomplished, and it's, you know, very much related and kind of talked about in the same conversation as artificial intelligence, it can be a little bit of a mis, uh, you know, conception that RPA is something which is meant to replace some of your human workers, where really RPA is not intended to be a replacement for intelligent human interactions with systems, like where there needs to be decisions that are going to be made, you know, based on different data and, you know, a uh, widening range of data sets. And that isn't to say that it wouldn't necessarily be possible to build out RPA processes that are using, you know, different intelligent, you know, systems involved. You know, you can have some conditional logic in your RPA systems and you can use other, you know, intelligent software. So a, a perfect example might be if you have a legacy inbox that is, has a bunch of submissions, you want to try and parse out the information in, you know, PDFs and the submissions using like AI tools in order to do that, like the OCR work, and then pull that data information in and then use RPA to push that data into an external system. Like that is something where it might have like different intelligent processes involved. But as those things try and get more and more involved, it's going to make a lot more sense to move away from RPA and more into a you know, robust integration between those systems. And that's because RPA is not maintenance free. So because of the fact that RPA is using the front end systems and the front end you know, UIs that a normal human would use, it means that as those systems change, which often is going to be the case, because if you're talking about modern software, you're often talking about, you know, building out new systems and iterating over it and building out new eyes and enhancing them. So you're going to over time have new changes to your UI, which is then going to have to be reflected in your RPA bots. And that maintenance can be something which is going to end up being, you know, more of a time sink over time than uh, building out a robust integration between systems. And so because of that reason, as your, you know, RPA bots, you would, you know, tend to use them for more long-term solutions, or if you were trying to have something which was going to be more complex, it's going to make a lot more sense to just build out those into actual robust integrations between the different systems that you have. And so that is a brief introduction into RPA more generally. And so now I am going to hand it over to Mark to talk a little bit more about exactly what the Appian RPA offering is and how exactly we can try and use that offering in order to accomplish these in some of your existing processes. All right. Uh, yep. Thanks, Colin. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. Um, yeah, and uh, so whereas Colin gave us sort of a high level uh, overview of what RPA is in general, I'm actually going to be diving into Appian RPA specifically and what some of the uh, features and functionality that uh, we've really uh, found to be interesting, uh, we mass it on as we've been experimenting with it over the past uh, couple of months. Um, 
So to start, uh, to me, one of the key features of Appian RPA is that it's a all-in-one solution. Um, so in the past, Appian has offered connectors with uh, other RPA solutions like Blue Prism, uh, but what sets Appian RPA apart is that it comes as part of the Appian ecosystem. So you don't have to build a complex integration just to get Appian talking to uh, the RPA component. Uh, you get that two-way communication built in. Um, it's also nice because uh, you can use some of uh, Appian's other offerings to further extend the capabilities of RPA. So for example, there's the uh, intelligent document processing, which allows you to uh, extract text from uh, images and documents and perhaps use those in your RPA process. Or uh, Appian AI, which uses the power of Google to let you do something like uh, translate a foreign language on the fly. Um, it's also nice, another nice feature of Appian RPA is that it's cloud-based. Um, so it's available on any Appian cloud installation uh, and includes all the benefits that you'd expect from uh, using Appian cloud. Uh, so you have up-to-date security standards, you have instance monitoring by the Appian cloud team, uh, you have availability across the globe, uh, and all the other benefits that come with uh, that uh, Appian cloud solution. Um, it's also nice because you don't have to spend a lot of time installing and uh, maintaining Appian Cloud, uh, you can just, uh, you know, all of that is handled by the, the uh, cloud team. Um, another nice feature is the Appian RPA dashboard. Um, so this gives you a centralized way to set up your RPA processes, uh, monitor active process instances, uh, and deploy those processes, you know, across different use cases, different development teams, uh, different areas of your business, et cetera. Um, so especially if you're an administrator and you just want to log on and see, okay, what's everything that's going on with my RPA process, uh, the RPA dashboard gives you a really nice way to do that. And we'll actually take a look at, uh, at that a little bit later uh, in the webinar. Um, uh, another nice um, component of Appian RPA is that it's backed by Java. Um, so as you're writing out your RPA process, you can actually use the power of uh, you know, a very robust programming language to uh, extend out what your RPA process is able to do. Um, because there are a number of libraries that come, Java libraries that come with Appian RPA, as well as, uh, you know, such a vast number of uh, external third-party libraries for Java, uh, the possibilities of what you can do with a RPA bot are almost endless. Uh, basically, if you can do it on a computer, you can probably do it with Appian RPA. Um, it's also nice because there are a number of Java templates that are provided with Appian RPA. Um, so those help to accelerate your development. Uh, so you don't need to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, just basically setting up your, your Java program. You can get more quickly to actually customizing Java for a specific use case. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention uh, is the level of audit information. Uh, so every time uh, a RPA, Appian RPA process is run, uh, there's a lot of detailed information that's captured, like the parameters that are passed into the process, um, as well as a log of everything that happens during execution. Um, and that data remains available for an extended period, uh, which helps with, you know, uh, both like technical debugging as well as like business auditing and that type of thing. Um, that data can also be fed back into Appian applications uh, to feed things like uh, reports and visualizations. Um, so that's some of the features of Appian RPA uh, at kind of a high level, um, but let's actually dive into an example use case. Um, so what we did is we created a example that does a good job of demonstrating some of the capabilities of Appian RPA. Uh, so this is a made up example, but it does mirror some, you know, real world uh, uh, use cases that we've seen across our clients. Um, so the example that we're going to be simulating is a call center employee. Um, and in this example, the, the call center employee's job is to receive calls from customers. Um, and then after each call, uh, they have to log into a spreadsheet so they can record details about their call as well as about the customer uh, who got in touch with them. Um, so that's going to look something like this. Um, so you can see in the spreadsheet that there's a, a column for the customer name. Uh, there's some columns here for like the call information. Uh, and then there's a few columns that they're not going to get to the uh, call center employee isn't going to get directly from their call. So the customer ID, uh, the customer wouldn't know that. Uh, and the customer address is not something that the call center employee would be asking for. But that is important uh, for this particular, uh, you know, log. Um, so the way that the call center employee is going to get that information is actually logging into uh, what we call a legacy application. 
Um, and so what we mean by that is just any application that uh, perhaps it's a little older, perhaps it only works on a particular operating system, but the key feature is that it doesn't have the kind of integration capabilities that we might expect out of a uh, more modern web application. Um, so uh, what that means is that if you're using, uh, for example, out-of-the-box apping capabilities without RPA, you're going to have a really t hard time integrating with a uh, application like this uh, simply because the traditional way that you would do that in Appian is to call a web API or something along those lines. And this type of application, you know, typically doesn't expose anything like that. Um, so I'll give you a quick look at uh, what this application looks like. Um, so again, this is just a sort of example application, but uh, many of you can, you know, probably draw a real world analog to, you know, this type of uh, application. Um, so uh, what our call center employee is going to be doing, they're going to be using the search feature. Um, and uh, searching for a customer uh, by, uh, by name. Um, so uh, in this example, let's say they just got a call from someone named uh, Mary Lou. Uh, so let's check this box, uh, search, uh, and that will give us some of the information that we need for the spreadsheet. Uh, like you can see the client ID here. Um, but in order to get that full information, uh, we would have to actually drill into that particular um, entry. Um, so uh, what, you know, if this was a real world example, uh, what this call center employee would have to do is they would have to go over to their call log, uh, enter the information of the person they just talked to, and then flip back and forth with their legacy application uh, to make sure they get that in data entered in correctly. Um, also worth noting that this particular example doesn't have a copy paste feature. So the uh, employee would have to be doing all of this by hand. Uh, which is not only, uh, you know, very time consuming, but also quite error prone. Um, so you can imagine if that call center employee is taking, you know, dozens or, or even hundreds of calls a day, uh, that this is going to be a really big time sink for them. And, you know, they're going to be spending a lot of their day just doing data lookup and entry, which is not what they're really trained for. Um, so with that, uh, let's take a look at how RPA would uh, change this process. Um, so rather than the employee having to log into their legacy application, use the search functionality, uh, you know, drill into that specific uh, record for that customer, flip over to their spreadsheet, and then manually enter the data field by field into that spreadsheet, our RPA bot is going to be able to do all of that. So the only thing that will be required from the call center employee is just for them to enter the uh, name of the person they talked to, uh, as well as some details about the call. Um, so uh, I'm actually going to uh, actually show a live demonstration. Um, and for this demonstration, we're going to start in Appian and uh, then flip over to a virtual machine to see the RPA bot as it's running. Um, so uh, we are going to start in Appian, and we're going to use this uh, uh, log call functionality. Um, and uh, so what this is going to ask the uh, call center employee to do is enter the name of the person they just talked to uh, and some additional details about the call. Uh, now, you might be asking, you know, if we're going to start in Appian, why wouldn't we just move this entire process into Appian and, you know, then we wouldn't have a need for RPA, um, to which I would say uh, I, I totally agree with that. I think the ideal final state uh, for a process like this is for it to live in Appian, uh, and then you don't have to have any interaction with your legacy system or with a spreadsheet. Um, but, uh, you know, for many organizations, they're not able to just sort of flip a switch and move, you know, all of their processes into Appian uh, right away. You know, perhaps with this organization, they can't move away from their legacy application because they have other systems that rely on it. Uh, or, you know, maybe they can't move away from the spreadsheet because there's lots of people who have access to that spreadsheet who they're not ready to create Appian user accounts for yet. Um, so as Colin was sort of uh, talking about earlier, Appian RPA is great for coming in and filling in that gap where you still want to have the benefit of automation, uh, but you, uh, you, know, you aren't ready to move fully into you know, a robust solution like Appian yet. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start out uh, in Appian, um, and I'm going to uh, just enter uh, the name of the person who just called us. Uh, called us uh, so that's going to be Garrett. Um, right. Actually, 
I'll um, interject while you're doing a little bit of uh, data entry here, Mark. So uh, I've seen that there has been a couple of questions come through, but if anybody does have any questions going through here, please feel free to enter them into the Zoom um, chat and then we can answer them at the end of the presentation. So just wanted to call that out. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Colin. Um, all right, so we entered all of our details in for this call. Uh, Garrett called us just because he wanted to say hi because he's a really nice guy. Um, so what will happen after I hit submit from the perspective of Jessica, the call center employee, uh, I, I'll be done. Uh, this will all be all that I have to do and I can get back to doing what I was trained to do and not have to spend a lot of time doing uh, you know, data lookup and entry. Um, so uh, what I'll do um, you know, after I submit this is actually flip over to a virtual machine uh, where we can watch the RPA process as it's running. Uh, now it's worth pointing out that even though we are going to be watching it, I'm not actually going to be interacting with the virtual machine. Uh, and in a real world use case, this would probably be running completely unattended. So a human wouldn't have to be even watching it at all. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and submit this. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and flip over to the virtual machine. Um, now I am running this on a laptop. I, I kind of had to do a last minute uh, computer change uh, due to my uh, power outage. Uh, so it, it is, is sometimes a little slow uh, on the laptop, but uh, we can see that it was able to find the legacy application and, uh, and open it up fairly quickly. Um, so uh, what it's going to do, you can see that it's uh, pulling up the search functionality. Um, it is going to uh, use that information that we entered in Appian um, and uh, open up that um, customer's detail. Um, and the RPA bot is going to be able to capture that information even without copy paste functionality existing in that legacy app. Um, so we'll, what it will do next is open up uh, our browser um, and it's going to uh, navigate to Google Sheets. Um, so we are using Google Sheets for this, but Appian RPA is just as capable of interacting with a uh, offline spreadsheet such as Excel or something along those lines. Um, and uh, it appears that uh, the process uh, stopped early, but uh, if we had, um, you know, allowed it to run, then we would have been able to see that uh, it would have gone ahead and entered uh, in the rest of that information. Um, so again, that probably has something to do with my, my last minute computer change, but the RPA bot will go ahead and, and enter in all that information it's able to capture from the, um, uh, you know, from the legacy app and actually put it in uh, fairly quickly. Um, so I'd say we got through about maybe 80% of that process and you can see that, you know, how quickly it was able to run. So even if the call center employee had been, you know, sitting there, uh, you know, on the VM watching that RPA bot run, it would have already saved them time. Um, but, uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, this can actually be run completely unattended. Um, so that call center employee would, could have already been taking another call and not even have had to, you know, sit there watching, uh, you know, watching the data entry. Um, so uh, that's pretty much the, uh, you know, the, the front end of the demonstration. One thing that I want to point out there is that, um, you know, just the amount of time that, uh, you, you know, that you, you could save employees. Uh, so you know, I was talking earlier about how this might be a process that, you know, could easily consume uh, minutes or hours every day if that call center employee's time. Uh, and you multiply that by however many employees you have in your call center, and that can easily equate to, you know, dozens or hundreds of man hours every single day that you're saving, even with this simple process. Um, so you can imagine if you have multiple processes, especially ones that are more complex than this, that RPA can really be a, a great return on investment, you know, fairly quickly. Um, now, one last thing I did want to show before we wrap up. Uh, is uh, I promised that I would show the RPA dashboard. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that. Um, so uh, this is the sort of main view of the RPA dashboard. Um, this is going to show us all the processes that have run recently. Um, and I'll go ahead and drill into the one that we were just looking at. Um, this might actually be a, you know, a good example um, of the audit uh, data that I was talking about earlier. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and switch over to the execution log and uh, you know, maybe we can take a look at, um, you know, in this case, we can see that the process, all that red, means that the process uh, ended early. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, as if you're a developer and you want to figure out, okay, why wasn't my process working? Or if you're a, you know, business administrator and you want to, you know, just 
see what processes ran, there's a lot of information for that um, in your uh, RPA, uh, you know, in the RPA dashboard. Um, another thing that's worth pointing out here is this workflow tab. Uh, so this actually gives us kind of a wide view. And if we had been on this screen while the process was running, uh, we would have been able to see uh, each node get highlighted as it was being executed. Um, so to actually take a look at the configuration uh, for uh, that workflow, I'm going to go into the robotic process configuration. Uh, so this is what a developer would see as they're building out a robotic process. Um, and there's a number of sections here, but, but again, I'll scroll down to the workflow. Um, and anyone who's used the Appian process modeler, uh, this is going to look, uh, you know, very familiar. Uh, it uses BPMN, and we can see there's start and end nodes, there's a decision gateway, uh, and we have um, these uh, boxes are uh, roughly equivalent to uh, like script tasks in the Appian process modeler. Uh, so if I open up one of these uh, boxes, we can see um, here's the Java that I was talking about earlier. You can see on the right-hand side of the screen. On the left-hand side, we can see various, uh, these are all the Java methods uh, in the uh, Java program that I wrote. Um, so I can associate a method with each different node in my workflow. Um, and one thing that I haven't talked about yet is modules. Um, so modules provide a little bit more of a low-code way um, to configure your RPA process. It still requires some technical knowledge, but if you had, for example, someone who is trying to just set up something quickly, or maybe they didn't have a lot of Java background, but they still you know, knew their way around like um, you know, browser code and that type of thing, uh, we can actually use uh, some of these modules. Uh, so for example, this one that I have pulled up, allows us to click on an element uh, inside a, you know, a, a web page, um, you know, by uh, ID or, you know, different um, uh, HTML tags. Um, and uh, we would enter a value in here, and then our bot uh, can actually click on that element, um, even without ha us having to write Java code for that particular step. Um, so, you know, you do have the flexibility of Java. Um, I would say the modules are a little bit more limited, but they still allow you a lot of power uh, to do various, you know, interactions with, with different types of applications. Um, one other thing that I would like to uh, point out here is permissions. So I'll go ahead and pull up my robotic process dashboard, uh, which just shows us all of the processes that have been developed on this particular uh, environment. Um, and uh, this row that I'm highlighting is the, the process that we were just looking at. And we can see over here, there's a permissions column that's currently just set to uh, mark. Um, and so what that um, uh, is tied to is both the resources that the, which are, are the uh, computers or machines that the bot is allowed to run on, as well as credentials. Um, so if I click on this little keychain up here, we can see a set of credentials uh, that um, the bot will have access to. So we saw the bot uh, log into the legacy application, and it was actually using the credentials that are stored here. Uh, so it can access the username as well as the password, which is stored in a uh, secured way. Uh, so we don't have to you know, store uh, username and password information, for example, in our Java code, which would obviously not be ideal. Um, but you can see the permissions for this particular credential are the same as what was uh, on the robotic process. Um, meaning that uh, my, the robotic process that I just ran uh, can access this credential, but for example, it wouldn't be able to access one of these other ones with different permissions. Um, another thing to mention as well here is that uh, for this, this is uh, just our own internal environment. So we were just using the names of developers, but you know, in a actual instance, you might want to use uh, perhaps your application name or you know, some other uh, you know, um, naming standard for these permissions. Uh, you can create any type of permissions that are essentially like tags almost. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover with the RPA dashboard. There's a number of the other like uh, subsections here, but I, I probably won't go too much into those unless there's uh, specific questions about them. Um, but with that, uh, that pretty much covers everything that uh, I wanted to go over. Um, so, you know, first I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, and I think we are a little long, but uh, I'll, I'll let Colin and, and Stacy uh, know, or I'll, I'll let them tell us if we have a little bit of time for questions at this point. Yeah, great. Um, thank you very much for joining and uh, you know and sharing that for sure. Uh, especially starting with the heroic effort of doing the uh, the relocation right at the beginning. Uh, you're right. We are a little bit long. I'll steal the sharing back from you. Sure. Um, 
But so we did have a couple of questions. So I apologize for going a little bit long, but if anybody has a little bit of a couple of extra minutes to hang around, uh, we can go through them. Uh, the first one that we got, we got talking about unsupervised versus supervised bots. And I think that you, after this question was asked, you actually uh, went through and described a little bit about that, but maybe you can go into a little bit more detail into maybe just first what the difference between unsupervised and supervised bots are, and then kind of how Appian supports the difference between those two. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we talk about supervised versus unsupervised bots, um, we're essentially talking about what level of interaction a human has to do. Uh, so a supervised bot typically requires um, a human to be sitting there, and perhaps once the bot finishes a particular step, the human clicks the screen to allow it to go on to the next step, or perhaps there's some data entry that the human has to do. Um, so it, it does, you know, you do get some of that uh, automation benefit, but, you know, it does uh, basically require a little bit of supervision. Um, whereas a unsupervised bot or unattended, um, you know, can be run completely without uh, any human interaction. So we saw the bot that I was um, running today was actually running on a virtual machine. And, you know, we, we happened to be looking at it, uh, you know, while it was running, but if I had, uh, you know, that it would have been, uh, could have run just as easily uh, if there had been no one, uh, you know, no one there uh, watching it or, or looking over it. Um, so typically in a real world uh, situation, you would be running this on a, uh, you know, perhaps on a dedicated server, maybe even running multiple VMs. Um, and, uh, you know, it, you might have, someone come in, you know, check the logs every once in a while to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to, but it doesn't require a human to be sitting there and uh, putting in, you know, additional input. Cool. Okay. And the next question that we got was, I guess, talking about the integration between, you know, Appian RPA and Appian, you know, like, what's the difference there? And is it easy to integrate the Appian RPA flows into your normal Appian processes? Um, and so, I guess my first answer to that would be, yes, it is very easy to integrate. Um, but I, again, I'll, I'll default to Mark who has a little bit more experience hands on with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the, there's definitely, uh, it's definitely very easy to kick off processes, um, Appian RPA processes from within your Appian application, as well as get some information back about the process that you just kicked off or the status of a running process. Um, in fact, the uh, example, like the uh, Appian application that we saw that, that our call center, you know, example call center employee started in um, was actually built in uh, really less than a day um, by, uh, you know, by a, a, a essentially, you know, one or two people. Uh, and, you know, they were able to easily uh, hook in that, app, you know, the uh, Appian form into the robotic process that I built, um, you know, with very minimal effort. Um, so it's definitely not, you know, there's a, a, a very small list once you have Appian RPA on your environment um, to actually getting processes kicked off from within your Appian forms and processes. Great. Thank you. And then uh, we'll do one more. I know that we're running a little bit over time and there's kind of one question that's sort of been asked in a couple of different ways, but really I think that it comes down to, um, you know, you're making reference to the fact that the bot is running on, you know, a virtual machine, a VM. And so maybe can you just talk a little bit more about like where exactly those bots are running? Like how, how could you run more than one at a time? Can you run more than one at a time? And how does that uh, kind of interaction work? Right. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Abby, you're able to run Appian RPA on, uh, you know, pretty much any, um, you know, computer running a modern operating system. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, a little bit, a small piece of software that you would download onto the machine that you want to run it on, and then that machine will be capable of uh, running an RPA bot. So I could have, I didn't have to use a virtual machine. I could have just run it on my laptop. Uh, the reason we tend to virtual machines is because if you're running it on the same machine as a user, uh, that user is not going to be able to click anywhere or else it's likely going to mess up the bot because it's going to, you know, change the, the window that's in focus or something along those lines. Um, so you are able to, with, with any particular robotic process, you can, you can run multiple instances. Typically, each instance will need its own um, resource. So, but, you know, if you have a powerful server, maybe you can spin up a large number of virtual machines, and then you could be running, you know, many instances of a single bot in parallel. Um, so that could be really nice if you, you, you know, you had a batch process that you wanted to run overnight um, that, uh, you know, you wanted to, to 
be able to complete fairly quickly. Um, there's not the only real limit on how many uh, robotic processes you can run in parallel is you know, how many uh, resources that you can stand up for those robotic processes. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, and with that, I think that we will conclude the presentation. Thank you very much, everybody who joined. Again, you know, we're going to be doing more of these uh, webinars, you know, over time. So definitely look out on our social media uh, in order to kind of see the different webinars that we are hosting. Um, and thanks again for joining. And thank you, Mark, for uh, for showing us a little bit about our Appian RPA. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, absolutely.